Okay, good afternoon, dear students. So this afternoon, we will look into the contribution of Thales and Euclid in the field of mathematics. So these two are Greek mathematicians and they were considered to be the founders of Greek mathematics. Thales, in particular, is considered the founder of Greek geometry. And he is named as one of the seven wise men in Greece. What are some of the significant, significant contributions of Thales in mathematics? So, some of the theorems that he contributed for elementary geometry are the following. He said that a circle is bisected, a circle is bisected by any of its diameters. True enough. Because the diameter is um, a cord, cord that passes through the center. Yes? Diameter of a circle is a cord. Diameter of a circle. Let me use this symbol to mean a circle. So, theorem number one of Thales says the diameter bisects the circle. And when we mean bisect, we mean, okay, so suppose this is the center and this is a diameter, okay? This one is a diameter. Divides the circle into two equal parts. That's the first. The diameter of a circle is or should I say a circle is bisected by any of its diameters. Okay, you know that a diameter is a cord that passes through the center. Next, number two. The angles at the base of an isosceles triangle are equal. What are isosceles triangles? Okay, an isosceles triangle... is a triangle having a pair of congruent sides. And we often denote congruency by this sign. So the moment you see this symbol, it means these two sides are congruent. According to Thales, the angles at the base, angles at the base of an isosceles triangle are equal. Okay, We mean these two here. These are the base angles. Okay. True enough, because we have one um, property or a theorem in geometry which says that angles op opposite congruent sides are congruent. So if those, these two sides are congruent, then the angles opposite them must be congruent too. So the base angles in an isosceles triangle are congruent. That's his second theorem. And then number three, when two straight lines cut each other, the vertically opposite, vertical angles, okay? The vertically opposite angles are equal. Once more, when two straight lines cut each other, the vertically opposite angles are congruent. Okay, recall your definition of Vertical angles, galing pala kay Thales, ano? Vertical angles. When two straight lines cut each other or intersect each other, so let this be line 1, L1, and L, why LI? Uh, L1. This is supposed to be L1 or line 1. Okay, let this be line 1. And this to be line 2. According to him, the vertically opposite. Where are the vertically opposite angles? This angle and this angle. Okay? Let me use green. This and this are vertical angles. Vertical angles. And according to him, they are congruent. In like manner... Okay, we have another pair of vertical angles here, not just those marked in red or in green. Also, this angle with 
this angle. Okay? This is congruent to this. Okay? This angle is congruent to this angle. So we have how many pairs of vertical angles? We have two pairs of vertical angles. That's number three. Now, number four, the angle in a semicircle is a right angle. Okay? The angle in a semicircle is a right angle. Remember, inscribed angle. Okay? The angle in a semicircle, what is a semicircle? Half circle, yes? Okay, let this be half circle. Although it's not, okay, not exact. The angle, according to him, in a half circle is is a right angle okay the angle in a semicircle suppose this is a semicircle and the angle formed by the two chords Okay, let this be the angle formed by the two chords. Is this, and let's label it using, okay, this one. Okay, what is this angle called? It's an inscribed angle, right? It's an inscribed angle. We call it, this angle as okay it's an inscribed angle and you learned that from geometry that the measure of the inscribed angle is equal to half the measure of the intercepted arc a measure of the angle is equal to half the measure of the intercepted arc. So in this, in this case then, the intercepted arc is in fact 180 degrees. So this, this one, this is the arc intersect, intercepted. This is the arc intercepted by um, the chords or the sides of the angle. May I erase it now? And you know very well that it's equal to 180 degrees. So measure then of the angle is equal to one half of 180 degrees. One half of 180 degrees, which is 90 degrees. So that's for number four. The angle in a semicircle is a right angle. Okay. Next. Two triangles are equal in all respects if they have two angles and one side equal respectively. Remember, triangle congruences says here, two triangles are equal in all respects if they have two angles and one side respectively. Your two angles and one side, ASA, congruence. So those are some of the contributions of Thales in elementary geometry. Now we proceed to Euclid. Okay, what about Euclid and who is Euclid? Euclid was an ancient Greek mathematician from Alexandria who is best known for his work, The Elements. Okay, you may have heard of this book, The Elements, in the past, particularly in geometry. Although little is known about Euclid, the man. He thought he taught in a school that he founded in Alexandria, Egypt around 300 BCE. And one of his famous contributions in the field of mathematics is the Euclidean algorithm, which is a very easy way of identifying the GCF of 
two numbers. The Euclidean algorithm. The Euclid's algorithm is an efficient method for computing the GCD or GCF of two integers, the largest number that divides them both without a remainder. Okay, so when we speak of GCD, greatest common divisor, greatest common factor, okay, greatest, largest, it's the largest number that divides both numbers. Okay, so zero, zero remainder. It is named after Euclid, who first described it in his book, The Elements. It is an example of an algorithm. What does an algorithm mean? And an algorithm is a step-by-step -step procedure for performing a calculation, okay? According to well-defined rules. And it's one of the oldest algorithms in common use. And we still use it up to date. It can be used to reduce fractions to their simplest form and is part of many other number theoretic and cryptographic calculations. What's the formal definition of the Euclidean algorithm? Now, two positive integers are provided or are given. Let's name them A and B. Okay, output. It will be the greatest common divisor or the greatest common factor of the two. How do we do that? Identify which among the two is lesser. Okay? Now, if A is less than B, exchange A and B. Divide A, the greater. Okay? Divide the greater number by the smaller number. For example, if my numbers are 112 and 36, Divide 112 by the smaller number, which is 36. Then after that, we get the remainder, R. Now, if R is equal to 0, report B as the GCD of A and B. Because if uh, we divide the bigger number by the smaller number and the remainder is 0, then we can say the smaller number is the greatest common divisor of both numbers. However, okay, if, number 3, replace A by B and replace B by R, return to the previous step. So, we divide continuously. Get the remainder, okay, or should I say, um, we move, or should I say, we uh, go back to the previous step. Now, let's illustrate the use of the Euclidean algorithm in finding the, GCD or GCF of two numbers. So here is an example. Let the two numbers be 210 and 45. How do we get their GCF, their GCD? Okay, step by step. Okay, the steps are listed here, but we will uh, illustrate it in the next example, or should I say in a separate sheet? 2, 10, and 45. 210 and 45. Find the GCF. Find the GCF or sometimes GCD, they mean the same thing anyway. Greatest common factor or greatest common divisor of 210 and what's our given? 210 and 45. Okay, how do we do that? Step number one, okay, step number one. Divide 210 by 45. Okay, divide 210 by 45, and the result will be 4, remainder 30. Okay, so 210, 210 is equal to, from, let's put it here, 210 divided by 45 is 4, correct? 4, 180. 
So, 4 remainder 30. Okay? 4 remainder 30. So, we shall write here. Okay, 4 times. It's 4 times 45. Or we don't have to put this period. Or let me erase it first. 4 times 45 plus the remainder, which is 30. Okay, next, step number 2. May we have step number 2? Divide this time 45 by the remainder. Okay? And you will get this result. 1 remainder 15. Now, continuously do that. Okay? We do that continuously. After that, we divide 30 by the remainder. Once more, step number 2. Okay, 45 divided by the remainder in the previous. This is the direction. So from here, I'm going to put 45 equals. Okay, the remainder, I'm going to write here. Then enclose it in a pair of parentheses, 30. How many 30s are contained in 45? 1. Okay? Plus a remainder of here. So let's divide continuously. 30 divided by, okay, uh, 45 divided by 30 rather. May I erase first? Okay, 45 divided by 30 is 1. Yes? Okay, remainder 15. So I'm going to put here 1, 1 times 30 plus the remainder which is 15. So what will I write here? 15. Next, we continue the process just the same. Okay, look at number 3. Step number 3, divide this time 30 by the remainder in the previous step which is 15. Okay? So, 30 will now be listed. Or should I say written here? I'm going to copy 30 on the right side. 30 is on the left side, I should say. Is equal to 30 divided by 15. So, how many 15s? San galing si 15? That's from the previous remainder. Okay? How many 15s are contained in 30? It's exactly equal to 2 plus a remainder of 0. So here, since our remainder is 0, remainder of 0, the greatest common divisor, therefore, is the last non-zero remainder. Okay? The GCD is the last non-zero remainder. So let's go back. What's the last non-zero remainder? Take note that these are remainders. These two here are the remainders. Okay? So the moment you end up with a zero remainder, you stop. So how do we get the GCD? It's the last non-zero remainder. That's the GCD. Okay? So I have to write here now. May I erase this part now? Okay, our GCD then, GCD, sorry, or GCF, the GCF is 15. You can verify if you have calculators with you, 210 divided by 15, 210 divided by 15 is exactly equal to 14, and 45 divided by 15 is exactly equal to 3, okay? So that's the largest number that divides both numbers. This is the Euclidean algorithm. Let's go over. Okay, the two numbers given are 210 and 45. The bigger number is 210. Okay, divided by the smaller number which is 45. And that gives a quotient of 4 and a remainder of 30. Then from here, we bring down 45. Okay, bring this down, 45. 
on the, the other side of the equation. This time, we divide 45 by the remainder in our previous step. And that remainder is 30. 45 divided by 30 is 1, leaving a remainder of 15. Next, we bring down 30 and divide it by the remainder in the previous step. 30 divided by 15 is exactly equal to 2, remainder 0. Now we stop. Okay, the last non-zero remainder, okay, the last non-zero remainder is the GCF. The last non, bakit 2? Ano yung 2? Non-zero remainder What is 2? Remainder is the GCF. The last non-zero remainder is the GCF. Now let's answer the next problem. How about, although the answer is there already, 1,785 and 1, 7, 8, 5, and 5, 46. 30 divided by... Ah, tama. Okay, 30 divided by 15 is 2. Okay, okay. I thought you were saying 2 as the GC, the GCF. No, tama. Ito, ito. 30 divided by 15 is 2. Exactly equal to 2 and remainder of 0. The next pair of numbers, this is quite big this time. Find the GCD of or GCF of of 1,700 what's it? 1,785 and 546 546 I hope you have your calculators with you okay, get your calculators and Let's show the Euclidean algorithm step by step and find the GCF of these two numbers. So this is the importance of the Euclidean algorithm. It allows us to compute for the GCD of quite large numbers. If you don't know the algorithm, then you maybe you will do it uh, by listing out the factors and identifying the, the highest among the factors of the two numbers and that would take much time now this is an easier way of finding the gcd or gcf of large numbers so we begin by dividing the bigger number by the smaller number okay so 1785 equals okay so this is our guide 546 times bl blank plus blank. Okay, this is what we are to find out. So, 1,785, get your calcule, divided by five, 546. Okay, get, just get the okay, inti integer part or the integral part of the quotient. I have my calculator with me, 1,785 1, divided by 546 is 3 point something. So just get 3, okay, times, wait, 3 times 546 is 1,638. And then subtract 1,785 minus that is 147. Okay? So, what shall I write here now? What will I write here? The quotient, the integral part, the integer part, which is 3. So, I'm going to put here now 3 and a remainder of 147. Okay? 147. Now, we proceed to the next step. Step number 2. We... Write this now here. Okay, correct? So, 546 will now be equal to 
bring this down. This will be our new divisor. Okay? We will divide it by the remainder in the previous, which is 147. So, this is what we are going to find. This plus, okay, did Ray said GCF 21, correct. But let's just show it step by step for the rest who cannot follow. 546 divided by 147. Again, get your calculators. 546 divided by 147 is equal to 3. Yes? Okay. 3 remainder, 105. You're right. Because 147 times 3 is 441. And that will leave a remainder of 105. So what will I put here? What will I write here? I'm going to put in here 3 and the remainder is 105. Are we done? Not yet. We continue. Bring this down. Write it on the opposite side. So 147 is equal to, we also bring this down, okay, equal to 105 times blank plus remainder. Okay, so to identify that, we again divide 107 by 147 rather by 105. So let's erase this now. So we'll have space to write our computation. This is 546. Okay, so 147 divided by 105 is 1 remainder. Okay, remainder 42. You're right. So I shall write here now 1 remainder 42. Should we stop now? Not yet. Okay, we will stop only when we get a 0 remainder. So continuously do the same process. Bring down 105 and then equals. Okay, bring down 42. This will be our new divisor. Ito na yung bagong divisor natin. Okay, plus blank. 105 divided by 42 is 2, correct? 2, that's 84. Remainder, 21. So you're right. Remainder, 21. And what shall I write here? 2. Okay, we continue because we did not get a 0 remainder yet. So, bring down 42, bring down 21. Okay, 20, uh, 42, I should say, is equal to blank times 21. Obviously, this one is a factor of 21, and it's exactly equal to 2, twice of 21, remainder 0. Okay, since our remainder is 0, now we stop. Which is the last non-zero remainder? The last non-zero remainder is 21. Therefore, the GCF is 21. Okay? The GCF is 21. GCF is 21. How many got the same answer? Okay. Now, we move on to the next. I think this is a small number. Huwag na to. I want you to answer on your own. Can you try on your own? Number 5. Okay? 830 and 80. Okay? Do it now. Yes. 830 and 80. GCF is 21. How many got the correct answer? I think most of you got the correct answer. I want you to work on 830 and 80 before we proceed to the next slide. 830 and 80. 800. Okay, 830 and 80.
Shall we do it? Or a ten? How many ten? Okay, okay, ten. Okay, so let's answer together and verify whether your answers are correct. Although most of you answered ten already. So 830 equals 80 plus blank. Okay, 830 divided by 80 is 10, correct? 10 times 80 plus 30. Okay, 10. How many answered 10? 1, 2, 3, 6 answered 10. Now, bring this down. 80. Bring down 30. Oh, very easy. Mom, 30 po. Anong 10? GCF 10? Okay. GCF 10 or 30? Sige, let's answer together. 80. 80 equals 30. What? Ano yung 30? 30 times 2 plus 20. Correct? And then, bring down 30 equals 20 times 1 plus 10. Correct? Okay, and then bring down 20. Okay, bring down 20, bring down 10, 10. Okay, correct answer is 10. 10 times 2 plus 0. So this is the GCF. Easy peasy, yes? Okay, 10 is the GCF. How about, okay, how many got 10? I think most of you got 10. Last example, find. Okay, find the GCF of 171 and 3,591. Uh, or let's say 415. Let's make it 471 na lang. 471 and 3,591. 3, okay, find the GCF of this pair of numbers, 471 and 3,591. You try it on your own. I'll try to answer it. Then we compare answers later. Okay, so the bigger number, 3,591, is equal to blank times the smaller number, 471, plus a remainder. Okay, however, if the remainder is zero, then the smaller number must be the, okay, the GCD or GCF. So, 3,591 divided by 471 is 7 and a remainder of okay, times 471 equals 294. Okay, a remainder of 294. Next, bring down 471 and 294. So, 471 equals 294 times 471 divided by 294 is equal to 1 plus, okay, minus times 471. Once again, 471 divided by 
294 is 1 point something times 294 is 177. So, leaving a remainder of 177. Okay? Next, bring down 294, 177. Okay, so, 294 equals 177 times, uh, may answer na. Okay, 177, 294 divided by 177 equals one remainder one seven seven remainder one one seven okay remainder one one seven next bring this down one seven seven and one one seven okay so one seventy seven is equal to 117, obviously, 1 lang, plus 177, ay, ano yung mali? Mali pala, okay? 177 minus 117 is 60, correct? Okay, next, we continue the process. Let me just copy. Ay, sana napunta. Next page. Okay, so let's continue. Because we don't have enough space in the previous uh, page. Okay, so continue by bringing down 117 and then 60. Okay, so 117, 117 is equal to blank. 60 times 2. Uh, sorry, wrong. One only. Kulang. Mer kulang yan. Kulang. One plus fifty-seven. Tama? Next. Mahaba-haba siya. Okay, bring down sixty and fifty-seven. Okay, sixty is equal to blank fifty-seven. One plus Three. Okay, finally, 57, last step, 57 is equal to 3 times, 57 is exactly divisible by 3, okay, 57 is divisible by 3, it's 19, Plus zero. Okay? So the GCF is the last non-zero remainder, which is 3. The last non-zero remainder is 3. So answer, GCF, the GCF is 3. GCF is, okay? So that's how we make use of the Euclidean algorithm i think the examples are enough the rest will be for your assignment so let's continue okay one last slide euclid's the elements okay there are 13 books on in in his book i should say there are 13 books in his elements and the following are the focus or contents of each book Book 1, all about triangles, parallels, and area. Book 2 is about geometric algebra. Book 3 has to do with circles. Book 4, construction 4, remember the difference between inscribed and circumscribed figures. It's there in book 4 of Euclid. Book 5 is all about theory of proportions. Book 6 has to do with similar figures and Proportions. Book 7, Fundamentals of Number Theory. Okay, Number Theory, Properties of Numbers. You can find your Euclidean algorithm in Number Theory. So when you will, st I think you are studying Number Theory right now, or no, it will be in second year. You will again encounter the Euclidean algorithm. 
Okay, theory of numbers. Book 8, continued proportion in theory of numbers, number theory. Number 9 is number theory, book 9. Book 10, classification of incommensurables. Book 11, about solid geometry. Book 12, measurement of figures. And book 13, about regular solids. Okay? Regular solids. Some of the axioms, some of the axioms of Euclid are the following. By the way, what's the difference between axiom and a postulate? Okay? Axiom and a postulate, please look into that because I'll be asking you that later next meeting the difference between axiom and postulates and then i want you to identify some postulates and axioms you which you may have um, learned about in your previous math subjects but for euclid's axioms these consist of the following number one it is possible to draw a straight line from any point to any point okay from any point to any point for instance from one point I could extend this okay to the left or to the right Ito, to the left or to the right in any direction it is possible to draw it is possible to draw a straight line from any point to any point number two it is possible to extend a finite straight line continuously in a straight line. But in modern terminology, this says that a line segment can be extended past either of its endpoints to form an arbitrary large line segment. Okay, line segment. By the way, there's a difference between a line and a line segment and a ray. Okay, ray. What's the difference between and among line, line segment, and array? Anyone can differentiate between and among the three line, Okay, remember also in your previous geometry class about undefined terms. What are the undefined terms in geometry? A point, yes, is an undefined term. What else are undefined terms in geometry? What is a line? What about a line segment? Okay, line, a line segment. Can you differentiate between the two? Line and a line segment. And line segment versus array. Okay, let me um, draw three figures and identify which one, okay, which one is a line, which one is a line segment, and which one is a array. Say point O, for example. Let this be I, double I. And triple I. Okay, so which one is, let's say this is letter A, B, C. A, B, C. I, first I. I is a array. Okay, ray. You all agree that this is a ray. Okay, how about the second? Double I. What can you say about double I? What about double I? Double I is is array line segment. Sige, line segment daw ito. And how about the third? A B No, no, the third. The third is, the third is a line, okay? 
So what then is the distinction between a line and a line segment? How different is a line from a line segment then? From this simple illustration, okay? Uh, so what then is the difference between the two? A line segment is bounded, yes? By and points. It's bounded. This means it ends here or starts here and ends here. We cannot anymore extend this infinitely to this direction. It has limitation like what one of you said. Okay, boundaries, it's bounded. Whereas for a line, we can extend this infinitely to both directions, to opposite directions, boundless, endless, infinite. Okay, so it's uh, infinite. We can extend this infinitely to this direction. We can extend it infinitely to the other direction. How about array? Okay, what about array? One side could be extended infinitely. Okay, starts with an yeah. end point and this one. And this one could be extended infinitely towards this direction. So that's it. Next, number three, it is possible to create a circle with any center. Okay, one is an end point and the other one is infinite. You're right. It is possible to create a circle with any center and okay, any center and distance or any center and any radius. Number four, all right angles are equal to one another. A right angle is, by Euclid's definition, half of a straight angle. Okay, a straight angle is straight angle. A straight angle is 180, yes? 180 degrees, right? It's 180 degrees. So by definition of Euclid, Euclid's definition of a right angle is half of a straight angle. So if a line segment has okay, one of it, its end points on uh, another line segment and divides the second segment into two angles that are equal to each other, the two angles are called right angles. Okay, so a straight angle is 180 divided by 2. That makes it a right angle. If a straight line, okay, falling on crossing two straight line makes the interior angles on the same sides less than two right angles, the two straight lines, if produced uh, indefinitely meet on that side, uh, the angles are less than two right angles. Things which are equal to the same things are equal to each other. What can you remember about this? Things which are equal to the same things are equal to each other. If A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. What, how do we call that property? How do we call that property of the set of real numbers? Once more. Things which are equal to the same things are equal to each other. Things which are equal to the same things are equal to each other. If A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. How do we call that property? That's transitive, right? Next, if equals are added to equals, the wholes are equal. If equals are added to equals, just like your addition property of equality, yes? Adding the same quantity on both sides of the equation preserves the equality. The wholes are still equal. So adding two equations preserves the equality. Or adding the same quantity on both sides of an equation, okay, makes the equation, or should I say left and right side, equal or preserves the equality. Next, ito naman, again, referring to some, some of the properties of your set of real numbers. Look at this, number 10. Okay, what property are you reminded about in number 10? 
if equals are subtracted from equals, okay, if equals are subtracted from equals, the remainders are, or the differences are equals. So here is an equation, we subtract equal, same quantities on both sides, the difference, okay, are still equal. That's your subtraction property of equality, yes? And the previous is in fact your addition property of equality. So see, this is Euclid's axiom. Number 11, things that coincide with one another are equal to one another. Okay? Things that coincide with one another are equal to one another like your reflexive property, A is equal to A. The whole is greater than the part. Okay, the whole is greater than the part. Okay, we will study more of uh, Euclid's axioms next meeting. So we will stop with this. Please take note of your assignment. Okay, your assignment is on the assessment part. Ito. So you will answer numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. So as part of